Or should I start now? So please let me know when we share start. So good morning, our presenters and participants. Welcome to Virtual VTSO International Convention 2021. On behalf of the organizing committee, we would like to thank you so much for your participation and contribution to our annual convention success. So we are Maud, uh, we are Nhung Pham from TA School and going from the university and we will be the presentation's moderator today. We are delighted to see all of you in light of virtual present, uh, present today, especially in this overall presentation. So we do hope that all of you will be able to uh, have some valuable analysis and experience that takeaways for the following talk. Uh, before the presentation, there are a few considerations. Uh, in case you have a concern or presentation, feel free to leave them in uh, the comment section in the live stream or chat box in Zoom. Um, we gladly welcome Dr. Duan of Odwanta from University of uh, Economics, Hotsmin City, in this uh, our presentation. Uh, we can title Teachers' Pedagogical Decision to Bridge an Expectation Rea Reality Gap in economics, English medium instruction courses. So Dr. Vodonto is an English lecturer at the University of Economics, Sony Wayne City. He obtained his PhD in education in Victoria University of Wellington, New Zealand, when he works on uh, teachers and student use of digital technologies in English medium context of Vietnam higher education. So please welcome Dr. Ter. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Can you hear me well? Sure, okay, sure. thank you. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, depending on uh, where you are now. And um, uh, I'm Tervo, and I'm from uh, the University of uh, Economics Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, it's my great honor to be here sharing with you parts of my study focusing on teachers' pedagogical uh, decisions to bridge uh, the unexpected duality gap in economics English medium instruction courses. Yep. And uh, in this presentation, at first, I'm going to give you a brief introduction of the rationale of the study and the research context. Then I will describe thoroughly how I conducted the study and what I found from the collected data. Finally, I would like to throw out some conclusion for my uh, findings. Uh, let's start with the reason why I, I carried out this study. You know, in Vietnam, internationalization is considered to be a major driver pushing the development and reform of the national higher education system. This is officially mandated in the strategies for education development for Vietnam from 2011 to 2020, issued by the prime minister. And according to this policy, the responsibilities of Vietnamese higher education are to enhance both staff and student mobility and provide society with uh, a workforce that can uh, compete uh, in the world job market. Alongside this, uh, the Due to, due to its global status, English as a lingua franca has become uh, prominent in higher education in many non-English speaking uh, countries, including Vietnam. And in 2008, the Vietnamese Ministry of Education and Training issued the National Foreign Language 2020 project, which emphasized English language education as a key factor in national development. This has resulted in many um, changes, including the movement to adopt English as a medium of instruction uh, in more and more university uh, in Vietnam. And in 2016, when my university, uh, where I have been working as an English teacher, yeah, started two EMI programs for mainstream students, I was so aware of how challenging it is for subject teachers and for students who have to teach and learn in such EMI setting. 
And in the same year, the university also introduced the learning management system and required the teachers and students to use them, uh, use it in their uh, teaching and learning. So uh, those events triggered me to, to wonder how teachers and students were adapting to the emerging context of EMI and whether digital technology could, use, could be used to enhance their teaching and learning practices. And that's the reason why I decided to conduct this study. Uh, my study was conducted at In One Vietnamese University, which offer undergraduate students two academic programs taught in English. They are called high quality and advanced programs. In these programs, students majoring in different aspects of economics had to study their subject taught in English by the subject teachers. Uh, you know, uh, EMI has been implemented in some university in Vietnam for several years, uh, but mainly in the form of uh, international joint programs targeting at a selected groups of students. Meanwhile, uh, the university I selected for my study offer EMI courses for only mainstream students. And moreover, as I mentioned in the rationale, uh, at the time of my study, this university also started using the 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 LMS in teaching and learning. Both EMI programs and the, the LMS system were new to teachers and students. So I think this context is ideally appropriate for the aim of my study. With the aim of investigating how the teachers and students use digital technology in such an emerging context, I carried out an integrity quality multiple case study with the participation of four subject teachers and their students in economic courses to analyze the data collected from uh, interviews, classroom observation, and focus group discussion. I used the abductee approach in which I looked for both emerging themes from the data and themes arising from the research literature. Now I will share some details about the participants. I have four case studies with four different subject teachers in different disciplines, like you can, as you can see, management, uh, economics, finance, and business information technology. Uh, the four teachers participants uh, have had many years experiences in teaching their subject in Vietnamese. However, three of them were new to the context of teaching through English while the fourth uh, was experienced uh, in using English to teach her subjects. The student participants include one first year group in advanced programs and three third year groups in high quality programs. So let's move uh, on to what I found out from the analysis. Uh, this is uh, the first finding. Uh, I found that there were some mismatches between the expectations of the teachers and students about these courses and their experiences uh, of teaching and learning in English. The teachers reported gaps between their expectations and their experiences of professional development, the provision of teaching and learning materials, and the student level of English language proficiency. Uh, the student expressed concern about the preparedness for our learning progress in content knowledge and developing uh, language competence. The, this is about the teachers. The teachers hold some expectation before participating in teaching through English. For example, they were offered a training course in EMI in which they expected to learn about teaching strategies or approaches to teach their subject in English. However, the training was mainly about the use of English. Uh, the course book, uh, another mismatch was in the availability, availability of teaching materials. The course book uh, and reference resources provided did not meet the teacher's expectation especially in terms of digital resources. The teachers reported spending time looking for teachings and reference materials on the internet by themselves. Finally, why the teachers had anticipated a high level of student competence in English. 
they struggled to communicate and make students uh, understand lessons. They not only had to manage students who had limited English proficiency, but cope with different levels of English in class as well. Uh, the, regarding the student, they reported expectation reality gaps in their email courses. They thought that they had had sufficient preparation to learn economic subject in English. However, some students realized that their English proficiency was not good enough to follow the lecture well. Meanwhile, some students, especially the first year, have problems understanding subject uh, matter, even in Vietnamese, because they had limited background knowledge in business concepts. In addition, the students uh, felt exhausted from having to listen to long lectures in English. And this further inhibited the students' comprehension of the lectures. Another gap between expectation and reality was that uh, all the students expected to improve content knowledge and English skills equally in these EMI courses. In contrast to the, the, these hopes, they reported struggling to understand the teacher's use of Brit, uh, English and pronunciation. They found that uh, they were unable to learn English systematically and comprehend the content knowledge effectively. Actually, these mismatches influenced the teacher's pedagogical decision when selecting instructional approaches to enhance student learning of dis uh, disciplinary content through English. This is the second finding I would like to talk about. The teachers try to bridge these gaps by using a variety of teaching strategies and activities in their lectures. Typically, they try to make new content accessible uh, to learners, uh, differentiate teaching instruction, facilitate student analytical thinking and problem-based learning, and engage students uh, to collaborate in interactive learning. And to do this, the teachers search for different digital technology as well. Uh, given their limited uh, preparation to teach English, they did not look for strategies that would have integrated language and content learning. Uh, the first uh, findings, the most, I found that the most common strategies that the teachers used to was making subject matter more accessible to their students. Uh, when explaining business concepts, they added practical examples that were related to uh, Vietnamese context so that students could understand them easily. And those examples were linked not only to student daily lives, but also to their interests. Uh, the teachers reported spending time searching online, joining student forums and Facebook groups to identify appropriate examples to enhance their comprehension and motivate their learning. They were not familiar with research or informed approaches that could be used to scaffold uh, language learning as well. Yeah. The second uh, decision, yeah, uh, the finding uh, that there was such a range in the students' English proficiency and content knowledge background, the teachers uh, had to differentiate the teaching instruction. They searched for appropriate materials from sources outside the course book to supplement the course content and use simple English to explain business concepts. They use Facebook, the LMS, and even their own websites to provide students with further reading and extra activities outside class so that students could practice as their the level of understanding. Uh, instead of giving traditional lectures, the teachers always used a uh, slide summarizing key points, including graphs or charts, so that only students could follow the lectures. And they involved the student in group discussion using YouTube videos uh, with or without subtitles. Uh, I think we can link with the previous uh, uh, presentation, yeah. Uh, to cater for students at different levels of English. The teachers also reported designing different forms of tests or assi assignments to assess student academic performance. Uh, they employed quizzes 
for revision and consolidation activities, conducted digital midterm exams, and uploaded groups assignment or multiple choice tests on the LMS uh, for students to do online. Uh, the teachers also adjusted their use of English in class. They co-switched into Vietnamese uh, when explaining abstract concepts uh, or uh, difficult vocabulary. And um, some teachers, they have to give uh, bilingual lectures for students with limited uh, English competence to employ or employ uh, translanguaging strategies during the classroom interaction. Uh, trans translanguaging can be uh, a complex term. It means uh, use the uh, encourage students to use mm, their, their mother tongue in this case as well. Yeah. And the next findings is about uh, the teachers also integrated visual aids and videos case study to facilitate student analytical thinking and problem-based learning. They drew drafts or charts so that students could visualize new concepts and think critically. I think it's quite really typical because when you can visualize something, it would be easier for you to retain it or revise it later. Yeah? And they believe that images help students to remember concepts more effectively as well. And they looked for appropriate videos on YouTube and designed activities that encourage students to discuss issues and solve problems. Yeah. And the next findings, yeah, last but not least, the teachers reported using group work that required students to interact or and collaborate. They thought that group presentation, quizzes, and problem-solving tasks would engage students with subject content and help students to improve their communicative skill. Despite the belief that student English proficiency inhibited the, them from interacting much in class, the teachers tried to create opportunities for students to speak by asking questions and even pressuring students to, to answer. This is really common when students refuse to volunteer to raise their hand. So the teachers had to pick up someone and uh, maybe made them to answer the question. It's, in, it's, it's considered as an opportunity for students to, to interact more, not only with their friends, but also with their teachers, yeah. And the teachers also try to interact with students outside class by using technology like email, LMS, website, and social network. Yeah, we are in the era of social network like uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and these days we can use TikTok as well. So I think it's really popular. Although the teachers did not set any objective for teaching English and were not familiar with language teaching strategies, um, engaging students in collaborative and interactive activities was a deliberate attempt to help students to communicate in English. In this way, I think enhancing classroom uh, interaction could be considered as a way of scaffolding students into academic English. So uh, in conclusion, uh, both the teachers and students in my study showed insufficient preparation when participating in the EMI programs. So to successfully implement programs taught in English, Vietnamese policymakers need to consider the expectation and the reality gap mismatches that both the teachers and students reported. Uh, in their teaching practice, the teachers only focus on student learning content knowledge and pay little attention to the learning of English. So this might be due to uh, the teacher's lack of uh, confidence in English proficiencies and teaching pedagogies. Thus, teachers need greater institutional support to develop their own language proficiency, learn uh, language teaching pedagogies and to prepare teaching and learning resources. In the addition, uh, the teachers use digital technology in their teaching, mainly to assess information and teaching resources, presenting knowledge and sh showing visual aids. Uh, the actual integration of technology into teaching and learning tasks were still limited. So I would like to, to raise some implications that integrating digital technology into teaching activities would definitely help the teachers uh, to increase student engagement and facilitate their learning of content knowledge in English. 
So that's all about my presentation. Okay, thank you for your listening. Please feel free to, to give me any question if you have. Thank you. Uh, um, really, really appreciate and a big thanks for our uh, for uh, Dr. Ter, uh, great presentation. Uh, please, um, we are happy to receive any question from um, uh, participants. Um, Dr. Te, can you tell me a little bit um your uh, like characteristic of your your uh, your targets uh, research uh your research I guess. Uh, I'm just missing a little bit because uh is uh is uh, uh EMI just uh, uh like the some some like uh, some problem in my uh institution as well. Oh. Because we we and I, I see that Vietnam also try to like a dual degree program, and mm. it maybe uh, also happen in some inter international school, uh, yep. public uh, international like uh, high school. Yep. Mm. We 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 do, we enter count the same problem like I just said we we lots of uh, like uh, instruction gap and learning gap from mm. students mm. as well. Okay, thank, thank you for your sharing. Uh, actually, I think uh, these days we are talking about internationalization. So um, many universities aim to uh, accelerate the process of internationalization and globalization. So, and EMI, uh, I think, uh, is one of the strategies they use to uh, enhance that process because they with uh, the programs uh, taught and learned in English, they can attract more student and more, in, especially international student and improve the ranking of the university as well as the profile of the university. But you know, um, it's not easy. It's, it's such a big challenge, uh, especially for teachers and students when uh, the English uh, proficiencies of both teachers and students uh, are still really concerning. Yeah, so uh, this is part of my uh, PhD thesis and I would like to, to, to find ways uh, to, to explore how teachers and students, they are actually, this is the top-down policy. So the teachers and students, they have to, they have to adapt to that, that uh, policy. So in such context, they, they, how, how they, they struggle, how they manage things. And uh, in my thesis, I, I found out that digital technologies could be a uh, useful tools for them to, uh, to solve problems. But it's not, it's, it's not um, the best solution in this case because there are more challenges than only teaching in English. Yeah, so uh, uh, in one of the, the most important implication from my uh, presentation today is about uh, the autonomy of both teachers and students in using technologies or in searching for their own ways uh, to, to, to manage this context. And it's also an implication for policymakers uh, who, who can listen to the voice of teachers and students more so that can help them, provide them with more support yeah, to overcome those uh, difficulties. Yeah. Yes. Uh that's great um, as well from Dr. Taylor. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah. We got the question from uh, Ms. Hang Nguyen. Could, uh, could you share more about how technology can help, uh, can solve this problem? Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, as you can see um, in my presentation, uh, I provided with some examples uh, about the way that the teachers and um, 
the teachers use to uh, enhance student learning of uh, content knowledge. Uh, for typically, uh, the use of visual aids or the use of video case study. Yeah, you know, uh, at uh, tertiary level, normally lecturers spend time in spend class spend their classroom time lecturing rather than uh, creating activities for students to engage them in learning. But and it's especially challenging when uh, you lecturing in English without any uh, interactive activities. So um, from the teachers, like I, 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 would, I would give an example, like instead of um, giving lecturing, the, the, the teachers used a video, a YouTube videos and desired as a case study for students to discuss uh, yeah, and solve problems. So yeah, this is a, a typical example for the integration of digital technology in using in, in, in teaching. But actually it's just, uh, it's still very limited. Yeah, there are more and more technology that the teachers can, can employ. Yeah, but um, it depends on how well they are and how ready they are with uh, using digital technology. Yeah, I hope it satisfies your, 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 your questions. Nice to meet you. Thank you for your question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I can see another question in the chat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how can teachers encourage students with low English proficiency to involve in collaborative learning activities? Yeah, uh, it's really good questions. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, I, I have already mentioned that. Uh, I will address it again, like uh, some of the, the way that the teacher, the subject teachers can uh, use to encourage the low uh, levels of proficiency student. Uh, by using code switching or trans languaging strategies. Yeah. And uh, in this case, uh, code switching is mean you can switch from English into Vietnamese and from Vietnamese to English. And trans languaging, uh, basically, you can understand that you allow students to, get, to use uh, the, the language that they are comfortable with. So I think this is the way that subject teachers can can help students feel more confident to it, to engage in activities because if you said uh, if you uh, requested them to uh, use uh, only English with their proficiency, it's really hard for them to to involve in active the activities. So yeah, it's also the best way to, to, to put them in groups where they can get help from their peers and they can use their, the language they, they are comfortable with and they pick up English, yeah, uh, accidentally from their peers and their teachers. I think also this is one of the, the suggestion for uh, subject teachers. How do you feel about the, 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 the answer? I hope that it's, it's fine, yeah. Because in this case, I just, I would like to mention that because it's really, it's come from really uh, not wrong, but the assumption of many subject teachers. Uh, for example, the, the teachers participant in my uh, study, they felt guilty when using Vietnamese in class because they think that in EMI classroom is for English only. But actually, uh, when you, you uh, because you, they think that uh, when students exposed to English as much as possible, they will improve English uh, naturally. But I don't think it makes sense when students uh, exposed to uh, the, the input that they cannot comprehend. So uh, as long as they can understand something, they will pick up things uh, easily. So when they get, they understand the language, they can improve the language. But mm, exposing something they cannot understand, I think it doesn't make sense and it's not worth for them to, to do that. Thank you. So. So 
so is this all? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah, I think my <laughs> time says so. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. So um, due to time, limited time, we uh, cannot include all the questions of Q&A session. So if you all have uh, any more questions, you can email the presenter today directly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Of, uh, yeah. Thank you, everyone, for participating. Thank you, uh, new Miss Newman, Miss, new, miss the Luke Ann is right. Yeah, for right, more yeah, right. moderating my session. Thank you. Love to see everyone again. Nice to miss you, Chi Hang. <laughs> <laughs>